Hey, it's Cam. 64. That's how many partials each voice has in Sumu. 64 channels of amp, pitch, and noise data, 64 oscillator pairs, 64 envelopes. We can do up to eight voices. That's a lot of partials. So where do we put them all? Enter the space module. It gives each partial a place to start and a direction to go. They can create some really neat spatial effects. In this video, I'm gonna give you some ideas of how to use the space module to create complex and dimensional sounds. So, this is the space module. It comes just before the master filter and output. It's essentially a panner, mixer, and reverb, with lots of interesting opportunities for modulation. This box represents the stereo field, and each green dot is a partial. Our position is in the center of this box. So instead of just left and right, we have three dimensions, X, Y, and Z, and patchable controls for each axis. Within these dimensions, you can set up two types of pattern, field and home. Home patterns are starting formations. You can do things like lines, grids, clusters, and rings. Plane defines their orientation. Field patterns are motion paths. We have some simple ones like rotate, translate, and scale, and two more complicated ones, wave and Halverson, a chaotic attractor. The speed control at the top determines the velocity. At zero, nothing happens. Positive values go forward and negative values reverse the motion. But what happens when a partial goes out of bounds? FAR lets you decide what happens. It can disappear, go home, flip backwards, or go somewhere random. And this rotate control simply steers the overall direction of the field pattern. On the opposite corner at the top left, we have a reset, which teleports partials to their home positions. It can take a trigger input, and there's a manual button. Noise introduces random wiggling to the partials. And theta rotates the entire space. Above the space, we have four different reverb sizes to choose from. Small, medium, large, and none. But the really special thing about space is what it's able to do with these inlets. It might look like a single connection, but remember, every chord carries 64 channels of modulation. Once you realize that, the possibilities of space really start to open up. And now that we know what each part of space does, let's get patching. Let's start from scratch and set the home pattern to line. And let's patch pitch into Y. As you apply this modulation, you can see the partials begin to spread out. So now the pitch of each one is effectively mapped to their height in space. But we're not hearing anything yet, so let's patch amp to amp and pitch to pitch, typical setup, and let's also patch amp to the gate. By the way, this partial set came from a collection of partials I made called Theory. It includes a bunch of chords, scales, arpeggios, and other helpful partial sets. Check it out, link in the description. Now let's add some envelopes, and let's trigger those envelopes with the amplitude of our partials. And it might be interesting if we apply this envelope to the speed of our field pattern. Now the partial's waving motion accelerates according to the envelope. Nice. We'll also want to add a reset to keep our partials from swimming out of range. Let's use the partial's amp once again. As a side note, high slew rates may impede your ability to use the partial's outputs as trigger sources, so keep that in mind. Now let's try another field pattern. Let's try Rotate. Ooh. Enveloping the rate of rotation kind of creates this interesting spatial vibrato effect. You know what? Let's also put this envelope on the mod index. I'm playing parallel fourths as a MIDI input, and listen to this nice glassy FM sound. We still have a whole other dimension we're not really using, Z. Bigger Z values mean further away in space, so we can make higher partials seem further away by patching positive pitch modulation into Z. Since closer things are louder, this gives dynamic accent towards lower notes. 
Let's revisit that slew dial. I love how it makes our pitch and spatial movements more slippy. Now, if we wanted to shift that dynamic emphasis we set up earlier onto high notes, we could either invert our z-axis modulation, or we could flip the whole thing around with theta. Theta becomes a macro control, reframing all of our spatial relationships. I highly recommend putting a pop of LFO on this one. Okay, now I want to take a few steps back and return to the idea we started with. Let's consider our partial set not as an audio sample, but as a dimensional landscape we can scan through and manipulate. This time, let's patch amp into Y. Doing this sort of makes the space module behave like a graphic EQ display. Let's wrap it into a ring. Put an LFO on theta to keep things revolving. We're currently moving through our partial set at its regular speed, so let's try slowing things way down and really zoom into those spectral contours. You may have noticed I patched all pulses to the mod index, and the rate of each pulse is patched to the pitch of each partial. This kind of relationship is difficult to understand conceptually, but you can hear it in the timbre. Because there's 64 of everything and we can place them all individually in space, we can derive these insane timbres from our one source of spectra. To me, this is what Sumu is all about, and I really can't imagine achieving this any other way. So now you know why the space module is one of the deepest parts of Sumu. You can just set it and forget it, but it is also fun to make it the central focus of your patch. I hope this video gave you some ideas of how to add extra dimensionality to your sound design. If you want a closer look at any of the patches I made for this video, you can give them a download, link in the description. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one.